Thanks for tuning in. Today's recipe is named after blind songbirds. Join me in making a delicious meat dish called Blinde Vinke. Hi, I'm Tuan. Welcome to my kitchen. If you're new to this channel, I focus on cooking foods from my home country, the Netherlands, and some of its former colonies, such as Indonesia. Blinde Vinke means blind finches. In the Middle Ages, it was popular to hunt songbirds and even eat them. It was considered a delicacy reserved only for the rich. Less fortunate people made this version, ground beef wrapped in a thin layer of meat that, when cooked, looked like the dish that the rich people ate. But, of course, it didn't have any eyes, so hence the blind part. At some point, laws changed and hunting songbirds was made illegal. From that point forward, everyone ate this version of the dish. You can find it at butchers and grocery stores alike, but it's really easy to make yourself. To make Blinde Vinke, you will need one egg that I've beaten with a teaspoon of water, a tablespoon of tomato paste, two teaspoons of dried parsley, one teaspoon of sambal ulek, salt and pepper, fresh nutmeg, 200 milliliters of beef stock, 500 grams of ground meat. I'm using all ground beef, but if you prefer, you can use a mixture of ground beef and ground pork and 500 grams of top round sliced lengthwise. I'm going to start by seasoning the ground meat. First, some freshly ground pepper, a little bit of salt, my sambal, parsley, and just a little bit of freshly ground nutmeg. I'm going to put on some gloves and mix it all together. Season the ground meat with salt and pepper to taste. Just be aware that we'll be seasoning the top round as well. I'm now going to divide this into four, hopefully even pieces. I'm just eyeballing it because this recipe makes four blinde vinke and I'm going to roll each quarter into a little log. So I can see that this one is a little larger than the other, so I'm going to take a little piece off and add it to the one that I think is the smallest, which is this one. It's time to pound out the top round. I have put a piece of plastic wrap on my cutting board and I'm going to take one of my slices of top round and lay it down. As you can see, it is skinny and long and what I want to do is pound it out so it gets less skinny. We need it to be long because the left and right side are going to cover the sides of the ground beef and then we're going to roll it in this direction. It's already on a piece of plastic wrap. I'm now going to cover it with a second piece. I'm going to pound it out with the goal of widening the piece of meat. This is the normal shape of a blinde vink. However, when we ordered the beef, we ordered it for pickup this time, so I didn't get to instruct the butcher exactly what I wanted to do with it. And this is a little narrower strip, so I may have to reshape the ground beef to be longer but skinnier so that I can easily roll it. So this is the last piece that we're gonna pound out. Now that I'm done pounding out the top round, it's time to roll the Blinde Vinke. Now the shape of this ground beef is exactly what you would get a Blinde Vink in the Netherlands. It is kind of short and stout, but as you can see, I don't have enough top round to wrap it all the way around the ground beef. So I'll have to adjust and make this a longer but skinnier log. If you have the same situation as I do, you will have to eyeball this. Just make sure that you still have enough top round to cover the left and the right hand side as well. Now that I have shaped the ground beef so that I can properly roll the blinde vink, I am first going to brush a little bit of egg wash on this top section of the top round. First, we will cover the sides, left and right, and now we roll it like that. I rolled the blinde vink from bottom to top, so that way the egg wash acts as a glue, keeping the roll together. 
If you're enjoying this video, please click the like and subscribe button. It will really help our channel. If you want YouTube to notify you whenever we post a new video, click the bell. So even though the egg wash acts as a glue, I am going to use some butcher twine and tie this together so I know for sure it will hold its shape while cooking. First, we're going to go underneath the meat with the twine, go over it. And now I wanna make a knot. And I do that by going over and under with this piece twice. And now I'm going to pull it as tight as I want to. By doing the two loops, this knot doesn't come undone easily. So next, I wanna put another circle around it in the middle. I'm gonna make a loop, go underneath it, put it where I want it, and then pull it tight, make another loop underneath it, over here. We're going to pull this tight. So now I have enough twine around it to prevent it from unrolling this way, but I also want to make sure that the ends stay tucked. So roll it over, measure out how much I need, and I'm going to add probably about 10 centimeters, uh, four inches extra, cut it, and I'm going to go underneath each of these loops of twine, then over and under a second time. And I repeat that for the other loops as well. Over and under. And the last one underneath and then loop around. Now we're going to roll it back and I'm going to tie this end and this end together. Just like that. And make it a double knot so you know it won't get undone. And we can now trim the ends. And there you have it. I finished tying the first. I'm going to tie the rest and then we'll season them before cooking. I'm now going to season the outside with some freshly ground black pepper and some salt. Now I'm going to flip them over and season the other side. Freshly ground black pepper. I'm going to start by melting two tablespoons of butter in a large uh, Dutch oven over medium high heat. The butter is melted and the pan is hot, so I'm going to add two blindewinkel to the pan. What we're going to do is brown it on all the sides for a few minutes, because you really want to get the outside a little bit of a caramelization and crust developing and you do that by just leaving it in the heat. So let's take a look and yeah we have some very nice caramelization on one side so I'm going to turn it a little bit to get one of the sides and let that sit until that is nicely browned. And we're giving it another quarter turn. You also want to make sure that you brown the ends, so I'm going to hold them up and keep that in the butter for a few minutes. Flip it over and brown the other end. Now that it's browned all around, I'm going to remove these from the pan and repeat it with the last two blindewinkel. The last two are brown, so I'm going to remove them from the pan as well. I'm going to turn the heat down to low, add the tomato paste, and fry that up for just a little bit. And now I'm going to add my beef stock, and I'm going to scrape up all the delicious fond or caramelized bits of the bottom, also called deglazing your pan. I'm going to turn the heat back up Bring this to a boil before adding the blindewinkel back in. 
Now that it's boiling, I'm going to turn the heat back down to a light simmer and add the meat back in. Cover with a lid and let it simmer for 30 minutes. We're done cooking. Let's take a look. They look great. They're nicely browned. There is enough sauce, so let's try one. Of course, before serving, you have to cut the string off, so let's do that. I'm going to slice it and let's take a look at the inside. You can see the ground meat on the inside. It is fully cooked with the thin layer of steak wrapped around it. So now I'm going to ladle some of the sauce over it. I'm just going to stir it real quick. So. Hmm. so normally you would eat this with some potatoes and vegetables and I always liked uh, smashing the potatoes and vegetables together with the sauce. It really adds a great flavor. All right. It's makkelijk. Mm. That is delicious. Everything is so well seasoned. The outside has a nice caramelization, which adds a depth of flavor than the inside with the soft ground beef. And even though there's sambal in there, it isn't spicy at all. The sauce with the tomato paste just adds another layer of flavor on top of it. This is great. I can't wait to finish this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button and don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have any questions or memories of eating Blinde Vinke in the Netherlands, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. I will post a written recipe on my website, twanskitchen.com, and you can follow me on social media as well. If you do make this dish, I would love it if you can take a photo, post it on Instagram with the hashtag twanskitchen. I will share it in my story and feature it on my website. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.